everyone. I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman, checking in with you today to talk about how do we keep ourselves healthy. I look forward to some of you joining us, and I'm not usually watching where I can see who's popping on here, so hello if you're there, and I'll see you afterwards. Uh, be sure and post a comment below and tell us that you've been here, that you've enjoyed this, or what else you'd like to know about. We're really excited that the 21st Century Superhuman books are out in the third edition. And these are guidebooks for these times. Important to read, digest, assimilate, so that we can nurture our body, mind, and spirit into being more whole, more healthy, more strong, and vital. Everything that we think and everything that we do has an effect on what appears in our world. So first of all, let's talk about the mind. You know, I've been really, really amazed at how many people have been using social media to be, um, you know, to put out feelings that they're having that are not happy and not kind and striking out at others. Um, this is really not the time for us to be doing this. Um, one of the really exciting things in book two, which I just have out in paperback um, in the third edition of it, book two is Mind of the 21st Century Superhuman series. And it is from the ancient Aramaic, which tells us that in order for us to live as beings of love, that we need to remove the data from our unconscious container. So when we're wanting to be unkind to someone else, what that really is is something inside of ourselves that we need to cancel, release, let go, and then remember to breathe, smile, and love. Because every thought we think, every emotion that we feel, everything that we voice, everything that we do is like in this quantum reality that we live in, it's like a frog's leg moving in a pond. It sends out ripples. It's like throwing a pebble into a pond and those ripples just go out. They literally go out into the world around us and they affect everything like a domino effect. So what we want to do is become really aware that we are centering in love that we are centering in kindness. And if we're not feeling that way, if we're feeling angry, we're feeling fearful, we're feeling hurt, um, we want to remove that content from within us. It's not somebody out there. It never is somebody out there. It's always coming from within here. In my book, we say, my books, we say there is no out there, out there. And it's understanding this quantum world that we live in to, to helps us understand how to change ourselves in order to change what we see around us. Hitler knew that he could, by inciting people to fight against each other, to be unkind to each other, they had these people called the brown coats, which are kind of like the black t-shirts, I'd say. And the brown coats would go out and where there was demonstration going on, they would literally incite riots, get people fighting with each other. And incite fear. And Hitler knew if he could get people fearful, that he could get them to do anything. And right now, we have got to find, we've got to navigate our way through what's going on around us. The news media was literally created by the CIA after World War II in order to manage the population, manage what information was coming out. So if you're getting most of your news from the traditional news media, maybe you need to turn that off and begin looking at your world in new ways. You know, we have these anchor points and there they are things like the traditional news media, but a lot of that is programmed. It is programmed to get us to live in herd mentality, to be sheeple, to be like we're all going together the same direction and maybe it's really not the best thing for us. How do we become free? How do we become truly free in this world? And the way that we do it initially is by breathing, smiling and loving, by canceling, releasing and letting go 
all the old data inside of us that makes us feel angst, that makes us feel worried, that makes us feel sad. When those things come up, just say, I now cancel this. I now release it. I now let it go. So are we creating our own focus for our own path? That's the really big question. And what happens when we're in a ritual like this, which I, um, I did a show on this the other day, what happens when we're doing a lot of behaviors that are not normal to us, the wearing masks, the not being, the having to social distance, the not being able to go places, the lockdowns, this literally takes us away from having strong anchor points within ourselves. And we must reestablish our anchor points, know where we live, know where our home is, our family is, what our purpose is, and even refine those things. Use this exercise to refine where we're going, who we're being, and what we're doing. So body, mind, and spirit are how we stay well. So spirit, are we connected to our soul? Are we connected with the aspect of ourself that really is our higher beingness? And it is what feeds into this body-mind continuum in this dimension of reality but it brings with it higher knowledge. Are we connecting with our own higher knowledge? Are we connecting with whoever we would feel our guides are, whether it's Jesus, whether it's the angels, whether it's the ascended masters, whether it is Buddha, um, whoever we follow who shows us mastery in this world, how to live in mastery. Are we connecting with that resonance and with our soul, our soul beingness? I had a really interesting experience the other day. I use a, um, a group called Fiverr.com and I hire people who are, there's like a work pool around the world. And I have a really neat man in India who helps me do a little bit of my book layout. And he wrote me this message as we were signing off the other night and he said, peace Baba. And I said, peace Baba. I said, I use that as my key phrase for myself ever since I felt like Sai Baba helped me stay in body when I had an illness I almost died from in 1999. And Sai Baba was this Indian master, East Indian master, who literally could manifest diamonds and necklaces and jewels. But one of the really cool things he manifested is this sacred ash called Vibhuti. And I have a little teeny bag of the sacred ash, Vibhuti, I'm getting chills as I talk about it, um, that has never become empty. And the places where the sacred Vibhuti is, a lot of times it will keep replenishing itself. Well, it's really important that we recognize we live in an unlimited universe. There is a creation is abundantly flowing to us and through us all the time. So this being connected to our soul, to our highest self, to our highest purpose, this is how we shed our light in the world. And this helps us manage what we're, we struggle with in our mind. It's easy to get disturbed about things if we're seeing disturbance in the outer. But let's remember, we have to look inside ourselves for that, that reflection. We need to be able to walk among them and be calm inside be resonating light inside. This is the truth of our being. This is who we really are. We are not the chaos. We are not the disharmonious things that have been created outside of love. So again, to stay balanced, to stay healthy. What are we doing with the body? Because right now there is a story out there of something called the coronavirus. And Many people I know, even friends of mine say, oh, you know, I'm wearing the mask because the numbers have gone up and I'm afraid that I'm going to get it. And so again, there's fear that's been cultivated in the mainstream mentality. I'd like to share um, something that 
came from Louis Pasteur, who supposedly came up with the germ theory, right? But Louis Pasteur was probably one of those doctors who was actually getting grants even back in the 1800s for doing this medical research and coming out with it a certain way. On Louis Pasteur's deathbed, when he had come up with the germ theory and had really stuck with it, he says, Bernard was right. The pathogen is nothing. The terrain is everything. And he had two um, people that were kind of his peers in that day who were also doing research but aren't as well known as him. One is Beauchamp and one is Bernard. And so that's who he's talking about. He and Bernard would would talk back and forth about this. And he said the germ theory was all wrong. It's the terrain, which is the internal condition of our body, not the germ. And it's not the bacteria or the viruses themselves that produce the disease. It's the chemical byproducts and constituents of these microorganisms acting upon the unbalanced malfunctioning cell metabolism of the human body that actually produces disease. So how do we clean up the terrain of our body? So there's many ways. Um, Dr. Robert O. Young, whose work I love, who has a book out called The pH Miracle, which I think is really important to have, and another one called Sick and Tired, Reclaim Your Inner Terrain. These are important. He's one of the kind of modern teachers. When I grew up in natural health care, which is many years ago, there were the natural hygienists, there was fasting. I ran a, literally a Hippocrates Health Institute with raw foods and wheatgrass juice, doing enemas, implants, cleaning out the body, using fermented foods to help create a good terrain in the digestive system and the colon. These are all important things for us to do today. And who are the people that are teaching us now? It's one reason I like to people refer people to Dr. Robert Young's work because his work is really seminal on this in in our time today. It's accessible. Uh, you don't have to go out and do a bunch of obscure research. The work of, of, um, of Dr. Ann, who started the Hippocrates Health Institutes, are just, is amazing. And um, so we literally, we begin every day with juices. We begin, at, and that's a juice. We don't even have a juicer. We make a juice in our blender. We use beets, celery, carrots, cucumber, chop up pieces, put them in there with water and blend it and strain it. And then we have a glass. We call that our morning juice. I hope that maybe you have some place you can get juices near you. I know my um, I know someone who opened up a juice bar in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I think we have one in a town near us where we live. One of the first things we do when we go to that town is let's go get a big green juice. And some of the times we can get um, green juices. We have a lot of parsley and cilantro right now. So this morning I'm going to blend parsley, cilantro, and celery with water and strain it and have this big glass of this green water because um, green uh, chlorophyll and the red blood cell are identical to each other. We really literally rebuild our blood by taking in these kind of juices. And then how do we clean the terrain? By using probiotics, We actually, I actually make a 24-hour cabbage ferment, which I learned from a lady named Jillian who was on Facebook for a long time. She's off it now. She has a book out. But one of these days on a live, I will share with you how to make the cabbage juice ferment. So you can literally begin rebuilding that microbiome, we call it. They say the microbiome is more important even than the brain and the heart is more important than the brain. So look at us, you know, we've got to use our brain properly, but then we've got to get our microbiome healthy and our heart healthy. How we focus on life. Are we focusing through love? Are we breathing and smiling? So there are several, um, with the coronavirus out there, there are several uh, modalities that we use besides diet, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I don't really like calling it diet because that is diet. I like calling it live it. So we'll talk about our live it in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> so cleansing our body, getting our body clean, taking in really live vital foods, taking in things that cleanse us 
Every morning we also have a soaked flaxseed, chia seed with green powders, wheatgrass powder, moringa powder, acai powder. Uh, we soak these overnight and we blend, <coughs> excuse me, blend those in the morning with banana and avocado. And we have, we each have a shake of that also besides our juices. So that helps clean out the digestive tract. It helps give essential fatty acids that our body needs. So we've got to have a healthy terrain. As we go beyond, another thing I've done a show on is the hot toddy. And I've had people write me and say they love the hot toddy. They use it all the time. So we want to get our body alkaline, our pH between 7.2 and 7.4. And you can order pH paper for about $8. I think Hilleron is the brand that we get off of Amazon. And um, it, it goes from 6.0 up to eight. So that's the range you want to have on the pH paper that you get 6.0 to eight. And then you can just pee on that first thing in the morning and check the color and it will tell you whether you're alkaline or not. And you may need a hot toddy at that point, which is hot water, lemon or lime juice. We put a little honey in it and a little baking soda, pinch of baking soda, quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon if we're really acidic. Um, and drink that and you will begin alkalizing yourself. You can also take a water bottle um, and put some green powder in it and put a pinch of baking soda in it and use that during the day to alkalize your body. Let's talk about diet and nutrition, live it and nutrition. I have been vegan, vegetarian, a little bit of fish now and then, a little bit of dairy now and then. Um, I'm a B blood type, I like, if I can get goat cheese or a goat yogurt, I, though, I will use those. Right now, the animal population is being given so many hormones, it's difficult to stay away from those. So getting organic, um, my husband eats eggs, that's a main um, nutrition source for him. But literally, I've been a vegan vegetarian mostly for the better part of five decades. And that means I don't eat chicken, I don't eat pigs, I don't eat cows. And one of the things that's become really visible to me as all of this knowledge of human trafficking, of the fact that people are, there's a whole cult on the planet that is behind many people in Hollywood and the government in a lot of places that we wish they weren't, which is being, right now it is being fought behind the scenes by a group that I call the White Hats, and these are in the military organizations around the world. There's work to take down this layer of people out of human culture. We have to go inside ourselves and say, how can I breathe, smile and love and clear myself of any data that might contribute to this? If I live in blame, if I live in rage, if I live in anger, if I live in the kind of hatred that wants to kill another person or hurt another person, I literally play a role in holding this dark frequency and form. So it's really important. And again, 21st Century Superhuman, book two, Mind by Carrie Kiristar Ellis. The links are under this video. Um, the audio book will be up in the next few weeks. The Kindle book will be up in the next week or so. Um, these are the things that, that help us we have to, we learn to understand this ancient Aramaic, clearing these things from ourselves. So when we think about our animal food production industry, which is really mass production right now, animals living in horrendous conditions and being in terrible fear when they go to be slaughtered for people to eat. And I, I can hardly even stand to think about this. People used to ask me, well, why are you a vegetarian? Why don't you eat meat? Oh, come on, you should just eat meat. And I was like, what I always knew was there was something in me that knew I wasn't supposed to kill an animal in order to eat. And again, when we are doing this, when we're participating in this and we're eating that meat that has been killed violently, it has been, the animals have lived in fear. They've lived in cramped quarters, um, their lives have been unhappy. We are also taking in that blood that has adrenochrome in it. And that is a drug. It is a drug to the satanic forces on earth. So this is something we want to move away from. 
and we want to move away, become a, a vegetarian, you know, one day a week or two days a week or three days a week, begin a gradual journey away from this. And it also, if you think of meat when it rots, have you ever gone by where an animal died on the road? That's what's going on inside your body when you eat that stuff. So remember, the terrain is everything. So what are we really designed to eat? We're designed to eat fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. Um, because many people are in transition, cooked vegetables, um, a small amount of grains, if we can, because of glyphosate, it's one of the biggest problems on the planet, our chemical agriculture. We begin, if, if you can support natural agriculture near you, if you can support organic growers, if you can start a garden. The people of Cuba, when their economy went down, everybody started growing a garden. Do you have your own garden going? Do you have even, if you live in a neighborhood, you can have pots on your back patio with tomato plants and cucumber plants and zucchini plants and teach your children how vegetables grow. How do these things get to our kitchen? So this is what's really important for us to remember. Um, I'd also like to say we use MMS on a regular basis. This is a miracle mineral solution. It's chlorine dioxide. It's what people were laughing at um, President Trump about saying use chlorine because he was stating in a in a code way that this is one of the ways to protect ourselves from viruses and bacteria. So is there really a COVID virus out there? Well, you have to ask yourself that. There probably is, there's many viruses in the world. Basically statistics show at this point is no worse than a normal flu virus. And there have been a lot of misalignments on numbers, things have not been properly reported. Again, we go back to the news media, which is here to program us, to put us into fear, to keep humanity in suppression. It's time for us to wake up, to breathe, smile, and love, to offload our own data that is not loving and begin living in a way where we are the ripple in the pond. We are the frog moving its leg. We are the action in the world that is creating a loving world. It's time for us to do that. It's time for us to do that now. I invite you to join me on that path. We call it the 21st century superhuman path. So I hope that you will get our books. I don't just hope, I encourage you because these are being called the most important books on the planet and guidebooks for our times. Links under the video. Uh, we also have book one translated into Spanish and there is a Spanish audiobook as well. So share with your friends, write us messages, say hello. We are looking at other platforms to be available on um, because of so much censoring going on, but we encourage you live in balance, live in love, take care of your body. Oh, back to MMS, I was talking about that. We actually order it here. We live in Mexico from Mercado Libre, which is, and it, it is sold as a cleaning solution, but we know what it is when we buy it as MMS. Jim Humble, who's now an elderly man, um, Sacha Stone did a really nice interview with him a couple of years ago, a year or so maybe, um, that is worth listening to. But Jim Humble started a church to help protect teaching about this, he ended up helping a friend get well from malaria accidentally by using what he had in his camping kit to purify his water. And he realized that the chlorine dioxide, he was a chemist, he realized the chlorine dioxide was getting rid of the bacteria in the system. So let's say we don't have a real healthy terrain in our body. We've been eating junk food, we've been eating white flour, we've been eating white sugar, we've been eating meat, all these things that create kind of muck in the system at the cellular level. And right now we're starting to work on cleaning house. Well. MMS is a really great way to clean up some of the viruses and bacteria that like to live in that crud in our body. It's actually nature's way of cleaning house. So we drink maybe um, three drops of MMS and the country of Bolivia has handed out MMS to its entire country, which is 
really, really cool. Um, I could look on Amazon and see if there's a link and put it up under this, but I don't really want to get involved in that. Do some research. Um, do some research online. Jim Humble has a free book out, ebook that you can download. It's seven, I don't know, 150 pages or something. It's really good on the history. They went in and um, resolved 75,000 malaria cases in Africa with the MMS. Um, we also use, so we maybe, we go through a cycle, maybe one week we will have three drops. You put two, a drop of the chlorine dioxide and a drop of a, a citrus extract in, in a glass together. And you just let them mix with each other for one minute and they turn yellow and they smell like chlorine. And you can clean your nose out that way, your eyes, and then you add water to it and drink it. I don't want to say you, I, this is what we do. And, um, and if we feel like we have, we're fighting something, we'll maybe do five drops. I'll do five drops. So we might do that for a week and then be off for two weeks or three weeks. And then we'll have it again, just as a kind of a regular routine way of helping to keep the body clean. Another thing that's really interesting, back when I was educator with Gerson Cancer Therapy Institute, Charlotte Gerson Strauss used to have a friend of hers bring quinine from South America. Well, quinine is one of the main ingredients in hydroxychloroquine. So one of the ways to make quinine at home is to take grapefruits. I'll take about three or four grapefruits at a time, clean them. I clean them in my plasma water, peel the peel off, and put just the peel with the white part in a pot of water, um, fill the water, fill the pot up with water, cover it, and let it simmer on the stove for about two hours. And that will extract the quinine from the grapefruit um, peels. And then strain that and keep it in a, we keep it in a jar in the refrigerator. And we take a tablespoon of that every few days. Um, if I were to have Actually, I did have like a tightness in my lungs came on a few weeks ago, and I had both of those. I had the MMS and the grapefruit extract here, and I just took more grapefruit extract like four times a day, a tablespoon of it, and raised my dose of MMS to about seven drops, and in two days, everything was clear. So how do we clear ourselves? We need to understand our bodies. It's so easy. We've been fed the germ theory. The germ is going to come and get you. And you know what? That's not the way it is. The body is our terrain for us to keep healthy, for us to live on a simpler, lighter diet. Remember, every seven days, your cells are renewing themselves. Build a new body. Build a healthy body. Use nature's. One of the other things we do in our hot toddy is I add, and this may not work for everyone. These are strong essential oils, and I know somebody has said that they're allergic to some of them. Um, so just be careful. Know what's good for your body if you decide to do what I do. But what I do is I put a drop of oregano, which is really strong oregano oil, in my hot toddy, or we put a drop of tea tree oil. Now, there's other ways to use these things. You can, you, we, they can be used externally. Sometimes I'll rub something on my chest or rub it on a joint that hurts. I love essential oils. They're another way, very potent way to keep our bodies healthy. So we like having in our kitchen, in our place that we get things that we're using all the time. We have oregano oil. I use rosemary and peppermint oil in my cleaning when I'm off the floor, when I do laundry with plasma. So these are all things we want to share our lifestyle with you um, because living, as my husband calls it, the temple life really helps us live in a beautiful way on planet earth. So I just want to say, I love you all. Remember, breathe, smile, and love. Take care of that body. Be vital. Be a frog that when you kick your leg in the pond, you're sending the resonance of joy, love, and beauty into the world. Conscious creation. Walk with us in the 21st century superhuman lifestyle, and we will see you on the path. Okay, much love to all. Write your comments under the video, share this video, and we will see you soon.